cared for really being met. Now, some kids are more challenging than others, but, you know, the point that I make is, is, you know, if we're really in conflict with one another, the most important thing that I can do in that relationship, that I can bring to the table, is firstly to reflect and take ownership for my part in the problem, and secondly, my part in the solution of the quality of the relationship. So rather than becoming critical or contemptuous in that relationship, and, and, and some parents in frustration do go there, uh, I'm going to still maintain a very loving, caring position, but I'm also going to be focusing on assessing how we are actually connecting. What's our attachment with each other like? You know, is it that uh, both of us are a bit ambivalent about each other at the moment? Or is, in fact, my child anxious around me? And if so, why might that be? You know, most of us as parents don't really necessarily set out to make our kids anxious around us. But, you know, the lifestyle that we lead, the things that happen in our lives quite often will take us into that space. So I need to work with it. I need to heal that wound. Now, one of the other important things that I want to say about this is that, um, and, and Gabor Mate and Gordon Eiffel really point this out very succinctly, which I hadn't to date. I knew it was there, but I hadn't actually articulated it as well as they have, is that most of the teenagers that I work with do not feel safe in their peer group. They, they gravitate towards them, but in actual reality, they're really anxious around a lot of their peers. This thing about social status, about judgment, is a persistent ghost in the machine. So even though they will talk about each other on a friendship basis, and some of them do have some relationships where they're completely trusting and that, that you know, they don't feel that vulnerable. But in the broader framework, in the broader landscape of the community, you know, most peers are not safe. And, and you know, because teenagers are going to be critical. They're going to want to conform with each other. But when we don't conform, they become rejecting. So the, 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 the fear, the anxiety of losing, you know, this network gets into conflict with what's actually happening. And I think very few of us adults uh, actually spend our time allowing teenagers to get in touch with that and, and to really sort of start evaluating very clearly what the quality of those relationships are that they're involved in. Now, that's very hard if you haven't got a firm, safe, secure emotional base, which should be the family. The other problem in family is that a lot of families are in the process of, you know, splitting up. And that, again, raises, you know, everyone's anxiety within the context of the family. And I think we really need to think about how we can um, ameliorate this. And so one of the things that is important is to have this attachment village where it's not just resting on the shoulders of two parents, but includes teachers you know, uh, consistent health professionals like doctors. I mean, these days you go to a medical centre and you don't know who you're going to get. So these sorts of things may seem trivial, but they're actually really important. And they're a consequence, you know, of the neoliberal social engineering where suddenly, you know, one size fits all. Um, it's all about, you know, efficiency and, and, and you know, the price of things and... You know, we're not really in that space thinking about the needs of the individual or the smaller group, the extended group. Um, you know, if we look at, you know, child to staff ratios in child care and so on, they're really, they're really thin on the ground. So we need, to, we need to really acknowledge and validate that we're at a turning point. We're going to need to do something pretty radical. And I think this book is one of those reads that will make us think about what is it that we need to do to create healthy, well-adjusted, 
and resilient adults through the process of bringing them up uh, in, in very strongly, securely attached relationships within the family. That doesn't mean they don't have friends. Far from it. But the reference point is within the family and, and from which they then assess what's happening in the broader world. Okay, so my endorsement goes out very strongly to, 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 to um, Gordon Neufeld and Gabor Mate. It's a fantastic book. I've really, really enjoyed reading it and it has certainly connected some dots in my head about how to frame my work and what it is that I need to do as a therapist to, to help people, um, help parents, help teachers uh, reconnect in a meaningful way with, you know, usually it's teenagers because that's where it sort of seems to erupt the most. And so, yeah, we've got a, a long way to go, but it's also an exciting path to walk. Just my thoughts for this week, um, and I will be back in tune in the following week, hopefully on time this time. And until then, look for more food for thought and turning points. And then allow yourself the flexibility to change so that you too can be more resilient. Until next time, I'm signing off. Thank you for listening to Inspire Change with Gunter. Gunter Swoboda does individual and group coaching for men looking to grow. For more information on this and the global Making Good Men Great movement, check out goodmengreat.com to get into contact. If you have a topic for the show or would like to be a guest on the air, please email producers at Miranda at Noirtainment.com. That's Miranda, M-I-R-A-N-D-A, at Noirtainment, N-O-I-R-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T.com. Thank you, and always keep inspiring change.